Crypto mats. I'm not talking about Bitcoin. I'm not talking about Ethereum. I am talking about crypto mats inside of Cinema 4D. Now, if you're still using object mats or you're inside of Redshift or you're using puzzle mats, this video is for you because this is gonna help save you a ton of time and post and on the back end of things because you can just select whatever you want and change whatever you need to. So I'm gonna show you what they are, how they work and how to use them in your workflow. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, so here we are in Cinema 4D and I first wanna show you the problem that CryptoMats solves. So what I used to do and what, like, what a lot of you probably have done for many years is use puzzle mats and uh, puzzle mats are great and uh, it was a huge game changer when those came out. So the way I would typically set things up is I would have, um, I just have two of these passes here for the sake of our example. And uh, I would set up a puzzle mat and I would name it you know, PZMA because if you have multiples, which most likely you will, and uh, you would set it up PZMA and then I would add another one that would be BCD and so forth. And then in here, you need to set this to object ID and set your RGB channels to one, two, three. And then you need to go into the object itself and you need to think of what you might actually need a mat for. So you might be thinking, okay, I need one for, you know, these three objects here because those are the ones that, I don't know, the client has uh, called out or that's the most important or what you think the uh, director is most interested in. And so uh, you grab, you know, throw mats on those, you go into here, throw your object tag on, and uh, you set your object IDs on the object themselves. It just gets convoluted pretty quick. If you have, you know, hundreds of objects you're dealing with, you need to remember what uh, object IDs are on what object. And, you know, there are ways to organize and, and to you know, help uh, clean things up a little bit, but it gets pretty convoluted, right? So the issue that CryptoMat solves is when you use a CryptoMat, you throw it on and it automatically, without having to set any of this up, creates an object ID or material, material ID, whichever you choose, we'll get into that in a minute, for each of the objects just automatically. So I have, a, I have the scene here that I rendered out with just these two mats. And uh, if I go into my uh, passes, I go to my PZMA pass, my puzzle mat A, and we have our RGB channel, right? RGB mat for these three objects, which is great. But here's what crypto mat does. I throw a crypto mat on and boom, we have a mat for every single object automatically. Didn't have to set anything up, didn't have to add tags to anything. So I'll show you how I set that up really quick and then we'll um, we'll, we'll get into uh, a little bit more of the nitty gritty. So. If I clear these out, I'm just going to start from scratch so that you can see how I set it up. And uh, by the way, if you, I have my AOV button set here. If you want, uh, just for quick access, because I use it so much, if you want to uh, throw that there, just right click on an empty spot on your toolbar, customize palettes. And in this bad boy, you're going to uh, type in AOV and then just drag this guy over into your palette. And Bob's your uncle. It saves a lot of time so you don't have to go up here into the menu and uh, redshift and AOV and choose the AOV manager. So the way to set it up, and this is super simple, is I grab CryptoMat over here on the side where the AOVs are and I drag it over and that's it. It's set, literally. There are a few things you need to account for, but that is the basic setup. It automatically will give you this by just throwing this on like that. So uh, because I use tokens, one thing that I do in my, when I render, in my render passes, I go in here and uh, for my output, um, I have, I always use uh, these tokens here because it just helps save a lot of, you know, um, hassle when I'm versioning up and, you know, I don't have to deal with uh, coming in here and renaming anything. So if you use tokens, one thing to be aware of is that it actually uses tokens down here. Uh, it will output, when you render a crypto mat, it'll output it separate. If you I do multi-channel EXRs. If you're doing, you know, separate PNG sequence or whatever, it, it, it'll, and you're doing passes that way, uh, it's not going to be an issue. 
But if you're doing a multi-channel EXR, it will actually kick out a separate file for your um, for your cryptomat. And so the way I typically set these up is I'll throw a cryptomat on here and I will make one an object ID and then I'll throw another one on here and I'll make that a material ID. So I'll show you uh, my typical setup here. I will show you uh, because this is the uh, setup that I have that I typically run. I have these three outputs and uh, just for a play blast, a low, a low res, just for uh, kicking things out and comping things to get an idea of what's going on. And then a high actual high res uh, pass. So in there, I have uh, these passes set up and let me just turn these off so that we don't need to see those right now. So I have a cryptomat object ID and a cryptomat material ID. So the material does the same thing, but it gives you a mat for each of the materials. So, you know, if I wanted to, and we'll cover this in, uh, on the After Effects side, but if I wanted to, um, uh, you know, use uh, these two objects that share the same material, I can just click with one click in a crypto mat and select those. So, um, uh, and by the way, these files will be available uh, on Gumroad for you to uh, for you to open up and dig into. Uh, so just check out the link in the description. I'll have those um, those up there for you, so you can dig in here and into the After Effects file to see how I set these up. If there's uh, any step that you missed or anything that you have a question about, but for now, um, I've already kicked these out, and I'll show you uh, what you get when you render these. You get your your main object. This is my multi-channel EXR. And then we have the crypto object ID and then the crypto mat ID. And this RS high here is because I added a token inside of the uh, the crypto mats here, this little RS, just so that I know which, uh, which render setting I'm using. So that way I know if it's low, high, um, when I'm comping, just makes things a little easier. So let's go ahead and jump over to After Effects and I'll show you how to use the crypto mats on the comp side. Okay, so we are in After Effects and I'm going to bring in my crypto mat AOVs that rendered. And we have our object ID and our material ID. So I'm going to show you how to use these. And here I just have my, my base render. Uh, I've just added a little bit of a glow and uh, did an add back on top at a lower opacity. Uh, super subtle, but it just helps brighten things up a little bit and also gives a little bit of a diffuse so that it doesn't look so uh, digital. And then I have some color correction and uh, a little bit of uh, some grain. So if I want to uh, ha select the objects here in my scene, uh, this is where the crypto mats obviously come in. So let's say that I want this disk here, okay? And I want to brighten up this uh, this disk. So I would grab my object ID, I bring it in here, and it goes black. Don't freak out. This is good. This is a good thing. I'll show you why here in a little bit. So I'm going to solo this layer so that none of the effects or anything else are, are messing with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my crypto mat effect. So when I add that, you'll see that we automatically get this little, uh, if, I, if I deselect it, I have my, my full white arrow, right? If I select crypto mat, you see my arrow, my cursor changes. So this is your selection cursor. So I can go and click on any of these colors and it's going to select that as a mat. So this is where the power of crypto mat lies is, is you can literally, it doesn't matter how many objects you have in your scene. I've had scenes where I've had hundreds and hundreds of objects and you can select the smallest little thing as long as it's a separate object in Cinema 4D or on your in your whatever 3D uh, software you're using it can be selected in CryptoMat. The only difference between this object ID and material ID is as you guessed it this one is based off of whatever material so it groups things based on material and this is separate objects. So I render out both because uh, I use both of them all the time. So I'll show you an example for each of those. So uh, in here, I want the disk, right? So I select the disk and I go down here to where it says output in order to get my mat. I go here and I choose mat only. Now we have our black and white information that we can use as a separate mat to uh, punch out that disk. So I'm gonna duplicate my base and I'm gonna call it 
foreground disk. And then I'm going to, we have our mat right here. So I'm just going to use that as a Luma. And so now we have our disk separated from the rest of the scene. How cool is that? So I can go in here and add in whatever corrections I want to make. And we now have that affecting only our disk, right? Just with two mats, essentially one mat, but with two separate mats, right? And it didn't, it, there wasn't a whole lot of setup. So uh, that's where the power of crypto mats really comes in. So the material ID, if I bring that in and look at that, add in our crypto mat, and I look at that, uh, it's, it's different colors and well, as it should be but it's different colors because it's grouping the material. So if I look at my render and I say that these spheres, uh, I, I see that the spheres here are a little too close in value to the background. They need to be popped out a little more. They kind of, uh, you know, blend in with the background a little bit. I can go in here and duplicate my layer and go into my crypto mat. And all I have to do is select one of the spheres and because they're all using the same material, it's going to select that. Then I change this to matte and we're good to go. Now this number here, all of this information here, uh, this is just showing you the layer of the EXR uh, that you're uh, using, which it's a separate AOV or separate AOV that was rendered out. So it's the only layer. And then here, if you click on this, this little number, you can see you get this other pop up here. Uh, this is the number that is selected. That's that color that we selected. If I go back to color, this number corresponds to this material color that it used as a mask that it threw in there for this mask. So if you know the colors that you want to use and, uh, you know, let's say you had another project open and you wanted to just easily use the same, same colors for that other project, you can just copy all these. And then, you know, put them in a, a notepad or whatever, a separate document uh, to share with uh, other comp artists or whatever, if you wanted to get that deep. But uh, for simplicity's sake, we don't need to go that deep. So we just select these. We go down here, mat only. And then we change our mat on the uh, on the layer here, base layer to uh, Luma. And we're set. And we'll name this spheres, wood, spheres. And then... We take this and we add whatever adjustments we want to add onto this. So um, I'm going to bring the highlights up and the midtones a little bit and then crush those shadows a little bit. So now we're getting those spheres. You can see that they're popping up from the background and we can see them a lot easier now. So this is where the power of CryptoMat lies. It's going to save uh, a lot of hassle, a lot of headache. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's just a, a, a huge, powerful tool to have in your arsenal. Now, one thing I want to show you is if you, like me, render out a multi-channel EXR, so I'll go into my main base layer here. We don't need that on right now. Go into my main base layer, and I'm just going to hide this so that it doesn't confuse anything. In our base layer, if I add in my extractor, because I, I render out multiple uh, passes, right? If I add in my extractor and I have all my passes here, you'll see that I have a crypto mat ID and a crypto object ID in this in the, my passes. And you might think, well, this, this is it. Because if you don't bring in your separate passes and you're used to working this way, you might get frustrated because if you try to use this and you add a crypto mat on top of this and you go to select something, you'll see no crypto mat layers are found. I don't know why it does this. If you do, hit me up in the comments, let me know. But for whatever reason, I think it's just the way it has to calculate it. Redshift still accounts for the crypto mats in your passes on your multi-channel EXR, but they're not usable because it separates them out here into completely separate files. So that's just the way that it works. If, if you know a way to completely include it into the multi-channel EXR, uh, please let me know. That'd be amazing. But uh, as far as I know, it just automatically you know, spits them out separate. So just something to be aware of because these will not work. Even if you pre-comp this, uh, you might think, oh, I could just delete that and then pre-comp it. It's not going to work. 
So make sure that you are not using uh, the extractor to extract your crypto mats from uh, your main uh, EXR because it's not going to work. So uh, that's going to wrap for today. Just something I wanted to show you guys and hopefully it's helpful for you guys in your workflows and it's going to save you a lot of hassle on the back end when you're comping your stuff. All right, that's a wrap for this one, guys. Thank you so much. If you liked what you saw or was helpful, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a beat. Also, I wanna say a huge thank you to all of the new subscribers. You might be new to my channel. Thank you guys so much for showing me the love. I uh, really appreciate it, all the comments, everything you guys have left, so I appreciate that, guys. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. And as always, work hard, stay humble.